Howdy, howdy. Monday morning quarterback, episode 77. Hard to believe we've been doing this uh, that long, but uh, thanks to all of you who tune in and share the videos, and uh, that helps, uh, helps keep it rolling. And uh, we have a good topic tonight as we're heading into the off season. So we um, still got some racing going on, but the season's starting to wind down. And now is when you need to plan for what you're going to do during the off season. So that's what we're going to cover tonight. Uh, last week, we had uh, Trevor went to uh, Lawrenceburg for the Fall Classic USAC race for us. Uh, I was racing at Mini Indy with, uh, with Hudson and helping customers there. So <clears throat> good improvements by Hudson this weekend and got his first heat race win and almost won the feature Sunday. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, Trevor was at Lawrenceburg. Great night there for Team CSI as well. Uh, Kevin Thomas Jr. picking up the $10,000 check. And uh, Sunshine came in second after setting quick time and took another chunk out of the national point lead. So really good night for us over there. Uh, out west, Caleb Montgomery won the USAC 360 race at Santa Maria. And uh, also out west, uh, Jay Davidesian and Corey Day picked up uh, track championships at Plaza Park. Um, so that was great. Uh, after Mini Indy Saturday, we hot-footed it up to um, Circus City, Hudson and I did, to catch up with some customers up there. Uh, it was great to see um, Chris Gurley and his son and, and uh, getting to see Mason Hannigan turn some laps. Uh, Colin Mitchell, who we've worked with a lot in quarter midgets, got to see him run. Uh, Lincoln Smith and his junior sprint and a whole host of other customers. Unfortunately, rain cut our night short. When it started raining, I figured it was going to get canceled, so we headed back. And uh, we missed Lincoln picking up his first junior sprint win and only his second start. So sad we missed that, but glad we got to see everybody turn some laps. Um, pretty impressive what they've done there at Circus City. A uh, ton of cars on hand um, and, and a good racing surface, and they were running it through really, really well. So cool to see how some of these kids have grown up. And um, Parker Leak was really impressive. I've uh, been working with him since his quarter midget days, and it seems like just last summer I was up there and he was in a junior sprint, and here he was running outlaw non-wing, so that was really cool. But um, this week uh, we'll be back at Mini Indy for a couple days racing with Hudson, also um, heading to USAC race at Terre Haute. Um, so still uh, a little bit on the agenda here before we wrap up the season and head out west. We hope all you guys had a good weekend racing, and uh, hopefully... You got a few more races to go before the season's over. It, it really did fly by. So uh, without further ado, we're going to jump into tonight's topic. And um, I kind of just made a little bit of a checklist here for everybody to, um, to think about. And we'll talk about these topics. Um, when we're done with this, uh, I'll answer all your questions. So any questions you have pertaining to this topic, uh, pit logic, or... Um, race car setups. We're here to answer your questions every Monday night. So this is the checklist that I found to be most important. And I, I think as your season's starting to wind down, the number one thing you need to think about for next year is what are your goals? And not just performance goals as far as what, you know, how many wins you want to get or a championship or top five in points, but where do you intend to race? How many nights do you intend to race? And those are all important things to plan as you start to look at number two, which is the budget. And I think you need to look at your, your race budget in kind of two facets as you're planning for the off season. What's your budget for the off season? And then I know a lot of people, they're kind of waiting for point fund checks maybe um, will help with their budget or a sponsor check that may not come back till later in the year. But we need to know how much money do we have to work with heading into the off season, and um, where we're going to spend that. Because there's certain things we're going to have to spend money on right away when the season's over, and, uh, and and certain things that can be pushed off a little bit. And for example, like your your engine, right? Um, your your engine builder is not going to be able to turn that thing around two weeks before the season starts. So you're going to have to get those bigger ticket items to them sooner, but you need to make sure you got the budget to pay them because the worst thing you can do to a, a vendor is, you know, drop something off to get done and he gets it done in January and you don't pick it up and pay for it till March. So we kind of want to look at, look at those things there. 
Uh, the other item is uh, number three would be what's the areas of weakness? So where do we feel like our race program was most limited this season? And we need to focus on those areas. Was it um, we didn't have enough money to keep good tires on the car, so we need to budget more for tires? Um, was it the engine just needed an upgrade and, and that was holding you back. But I think if you identify the top one, two, or maybe even three things that you feel limited your program um, in this season, those are the things we need to attack first and need to put at the top of the budget. Um, so number four is going to be maintenance on your equipment. And I mean pit equipment and tow vehicle, not, not race car, because we all work on our race cars but the generator gets overlooked, the air compressor gets overlooked, the trailer might need you know, um, wheel bearings greased and new tires. So we really need to make a checklist of all the maintenance items. What needs done in the trailer? Can we become more efficient at the racetrack if our trailer is better organized? Is that an area of weakness for you? Um, the trailer wasn't organized, we didn't have our spares built up, the off season is the time to do it. So then number five would be a plan of attack. Now we got a checklist and all these bullet points of things we need to improve upon for next season. Um, now we need to get a plan of attack, okay? What are we going to tackle first? And then how are we going to get all these things done before the next season? For some of us, we might have six months to work on this. Others might only have six weeks. So we really have to be diligent with a good game plan going into the off season. So then number six would be the timeline. When do these things need to be done? Uh, part of that's going to be when's the next time you're hitting the track. And so uh, also weather, you know, if you're in the Midwest and your trailer's kept outside, well, you can't pack the, you know, wheel bearings in the middle of January. So let's get that in the shop and get that done um, now while the weather's good um, and, and not put that off. So and then I think number seven is really important, especially if you have helpers. Most of us have helpers that are volunteers, and uh, the season can be a grind. So let's get a weekly work schedule. If it's one night a week, two nights a week, three nights a week, let, let's identify what nights we're going to get together as a team and work on the race car, uh, work on the equipment, and work on our things so we're better prepared for next year. So um, part of that's going to be determined by your timeline. How many things do you have to get done? How long do you have to get them done? But, uh, you know, let's not overwork our help during the off season. If we have a good game plan and, uh, and we work on everything at one or two nights a week and we're really working, we're not just BSing and drinking beer, um, you can certainly meet all your deadlines, which is number eight. And I think that's important to identify too, is, uh, when's the car got to be on the ground? When do you have to have it off to get lettered? Um, if you're getting new decals for next year or paint, um, is, is there things that have to come apart and get powder coated? You need to have deadlines of when that stuff has to get done and always plan worst case scenario. If, you're, if your graphics guy is normally two weeks, plan for four so you don't get yourself in a pickle and you miss those early season races. I think one of the things that teams get in trouble with is they don't prepare well, um, they don't have a game plan going into the off season, and then in turn they end up either heading into the next season, the first few races unprepared, um, and, and they have a lot of mechanical issues, or they just don't go to the initial races because they're not ready, and then that gets them behind. If, if you're showing up on the fourth or fifth week of the season, your competition's already been there four or five weeks and, and got their footing, then, uh, then you're behind the eight ball for the season. So there's also generally a lot of good paying races at the beginning of the year. Everybody's excited to go racing, and uh, the tracks generally have good paying races at the beginning of the year. So we want to make sure we're fully prepared and ready for that. So that's kind of my spiel on getting ready for the off season. Um, I think it's super, super important to have all of those things um, lined out and be ready for that. And uh, now I'll shoot over and answer any questions you have. Um, and we can also chit chat about anything else you guys want to. Um, so while we're waiting for questions, uh, just a reminder, we still have, um, I have to go count, either three or four spots left for the seminar. So if you're coming to PRI and you want to learn more about your shocks, if one of your areas of weakness is suspension package, and you need to know more about shocks, torsion bars, bump rubbers, springs, um, 
this is a great opportunity to learn. So it's Sunday, the day after PRI, and we start at 9 a.m., feed you guys breakfast, um, and it's usually about four hours long. We'll, uh, we'll break down a bunch of stuff and share years and years of knowledge. So definitely uh, get signed up for that because, like I say, there's, there's less than a handful of spots left um, for that. So, all right. Fire away with your questions. Does anybody have an update on the football score? I saw my dad was tuned in. He's got to be pumped. Uh, before I jumped on here, I saw the 49ers scored a touchdown, then intercepted the first pass for Baker Mayfield. So he's a big 49er fan, and it uh, looked like they were off to a good start. So we'll see if the uh, if the naysayers are silenced after today. Everybody said, oh, the 49ers are undefeated, but they haven't played anybody. Um, not that the Browns are somebody, but they're vastly improved from previous years. So I'd appreciate a football update if anybody's got one. So, um, also would like to hear from you guys where, where you're going to finish the season off at, uh, how many more races do you got and, uh, and, and where are you going to finish your season? So for us, we're going to end it out West. We've talked about this a couple times on the, the program, but, um, the micro race, the 10,000 to win micro race we were heading to in Texas actually got canceled last week. Um, I don't, I don't know if the things fell through for the promoter. I don't really know the circumstances for it, but uh, so we're not going to be attending that and we're trying to identify maybe another race that we can hit that week or if we'll just push our trip back a week. So we're still going to do for sure Hangtown, Bakersfield, and then the Winter Nationals, Las Vegas. So Eric Long's buddies work in the sky cam there. They have strawberry bushes on the roof of the stadium. 14 nothing San Francisco. 14-3 San Francisco. So San Francisco's starting off good. Mark Ashcraft, is the Android Pit Logic update coming this week? Um, I Okay, Kevin commented. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Trying to read what Kevin commented. So uh, it's in its test phase. Um, Kevin and I actually have a, a meeting after this to go over a couple things on it, but uh, I'm excited to put it through its paces. Um, the last few weeks as I've been mounting up more and more quarter midget tires, I'm like, gosh, it'd be nice to have all these in, in the tire library. And uh, we're going to have, probably this week on our website, we'll have um, uh, decal packs you can download if you want to use the same alphanumeric um system that, that I'm going to use for uh, the tire library on pit logic so you can just put a little bitty nice clean uh, numerical or, or alpha um, sticker inside your wheel to mount mount your tires and, and have those sorted um, so that's exciting but uh, yeah it's coming coming quick um, yeah congratulations Mark I saw uh, Boston won and you guys were, were rolling good Eric did you guys go to New Mexico that's a race I've always wanted to get to. So there's a race called the Balloon Race in uh, in New Mexico. And I think it used to be maybe a little bigger than it is now, but um, a really cool quarter midget race in New Mexico. I think it's in conjunction with like a hot air balloon festival. Um, so maybe, maybe that's a race we'll hit someday. But yeah, Pit Logic updates are coming. Um, if not this week or early next, I would say maybe this week. Um, Android typically can happen quicker than iOS just from the approval standpoint. So once we identify that it's it's good and, and we've minimized all of the bugs um, as best as we can, um, iOS is a little bit slower than Android as far as populating it once we say it's good to go. SEMA time, I can't race in October out of town. Want, want, want. Are you going to Vegas? That's after SEMA, the Winter Nationals. Let's not hear an excuse. Let's go to Vegas. Your kids need to race. New Mexico had a good car count. Good, Rick. I'm glad to hear you guys ran good, and there was a good car count there in New Mexico. Anybody else have any questions? Um, we certainly want to answer anything that you've got. Uh, Chad, what's the best way to store monotube shocks during the off-season, remove the gas or not? Um, it doesn't really matter, honestly. Um, 
I would typically just leave the gas pressure in them. Um, you're not going to hurt anything by leaving the gas pressure in them, and you're really not going to hurt anything by taking the gas pressure out. The one caution I will have is to keep them in um, a little bit of climate control. So you don't want to leave them in your trailer if your trailer's outside in cold weather because the seals will get hard. So, you know, I would say try to keep them, you know, somewhere where it's going to be 50 degrees or warmer um, is the biggest thing. Not going to be racing. All right, Eric. Well, you can come hang out with us. We'll probably be firing front axles in Hudson's car. Um, <clears throat> 87 cars at the balloon race, so that, that's a good one. John Farrell just joined us. Thanks for uh, tuning in, John. Got to see a couple of your cars ripping up at Circus City. Saldana's kid looked, uh, looked pretty fast up there, so that was cool to see. There was a good turnout up there. I didn't count, but I'm going to say there had to be close to 100 micros up there, micros and junior sprints. Um, the uh, micro sprint scene is growing in Indiana, so that's that's good to see. And Circus City's done a really good job of improving that facility. The grandstands are nice. The concessions were nice. Um, and, uh, and they did a good job with the racetrack, so those are all big things. All right, if nobody else has any questions, I'm going to jump off, and uh, Kevin and I are going to get to digging on this pit logic update for everybody. I know everyone's as excited about it as I am, and, uh, and there's just more things coming in the future for it, so we're planning to uh, have a really cool display of it at, at uh, PRI, and, uh, and certainly if I'm ever at a racetrack and you are curious about pit logic, uh, flag me down. I will uh, gladly show you what, um, what it's got going on on my phone. And um, and go from there. John was the track two lane at Circus City. Um, it was getting that way when the rain came. It was a little heavy early, um, but it was getting that way. It wasn't quite as good as it was at that non wing world challenge race. So Port City 189 car Saturday. Port City always um, sets the bar for a micro car count. So really really good. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you all have a fantastic week. If there's ever anything we can do, let us know. Don't hesitate to uh, call, text, or email, and we'll get your questions answered as quickly as possible. Take care, everybody. Thank you.